What features? For uh, just general features? Ooh. We have a ton of bug fixes coming out. And then we are... Um, uh, we have been looking into uh, a system that... Uh, uh, what, how should I put it? Some, some people will be happy. Yeah, yeah, and some will be not so happy. Okay. I don't know. Wow. Ah, no, most all, most all people will be happy. Everybody will be happy, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're not... We're, we're, ah, no, but that's the thing, right? No. Uh, I, I, so we're talking about the, the terrain update where you, you want to it's get the, rid of it, all the potholes, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's, uh, but it seems to be... a. Slightly larger task mm. than, uh, in <laughs> than I guess, but it's going. It's it's it's. Uh, we're getting there. Yep. We're getting there. Heroes and generals is well. It's kind of bad. This game has left a bittersweet taste on my tongue. On the one hand, it throws me back to games I enjoyed a decade ago. On the other hand, it really throws me back to games I enjoyed a decade ago. With its outdated UI, poor marketing and cash op, game breaking bugs and one of the worst matchmaking systems I have ever encountered, it's hard to find good things to say about it for being a completed game that has been out for as long as it has. This isn't to say that I hate the game, but I don't enjoy it as much as I did at first and I've only played for a little over a month. The plan was to go through a membership and by playing a little bit more than the average person would, see how far I can go. I'd say we definitely played more than the average person would have, but this was mostly to establish an informed opinion. And, well, to see how I feel about it as a newcomer. As with most games, we definitely started pretty average, but at some point we did get pretty good at the game. Before getting into the nitty gritty, my thoughts and opinions are based almost entirely around the war game mode, as there is an increase of experience gained exclusive currency earned and is the only game mode which sets itself apart from your standard shooters in the genre. This game mode has light RTS elements from outside of who is playing in your match and in turn is frequently imbalanced. You could make a video on this game mode alone which could take hours but for the sake of time just imagine the board game risk. Except instead of the bigger army winning, you play out the scenarios from a first person perspective. Credits, war funds, and gold. You'll never have enough of any of these and will constantly be losing as you gain. I don't necessarily have an issue with multiple currencies in games, I mean I get it. It makes the consumer lose the monetary attachment to the currency, which is great to attract whales and have your players forget how much they spent already. Credits are obtained from playing any game mode. War funds are gained through playing war game mode only while gold is your standard cash up currency that free to play games tend to have. On an average match for your average player, I'm going to assume you'll be making around 4 to 8 thousand credits. After the deductions from using your equipment of course. Yes, that's right, every time you shoot your gun that you bought, you must repair it based off the durability lost. Every modification you add to the gun also needs to be repaired individually, so uh, expect to be spending a lot on all the repairs you're going to be needing. In a month's time, with a membership bonus of 25% extra credits, playing mostly war games that give another 25% extra, I managed to accumulate 1.4 to 1.7 million credits. I have to give a range due to the UI being created in such a manner that you can't see the price of already purchased mods or mods that aren't unlocked yet for a character. This makes backtracking the amount of credits that you spent so far almost impossible from inside the game. Keep in mind, without membership, this would have only been 1.1 to 1.4 million total. I'm not going to get into war funds too much. It doesn't seem to be too poorly implemented, but in the time I played, I was also unable to progress that far with the RTS side of the game. So take that for what you will. As for gold, originally I had planned on making a comparison between credits and gold value. However, the shop seems to have made up the prices depending on what you're purchasing completely randomly. For example, 999 will net you 2200 gold. 1999 will net you 4800 into 5100 from buying a bigger pack. Membership conveniently costs just over the $10 purchase, so you're probably looking at dropping $16 minimally to reach the gold needed for the transaction. If we were to put a price tag on this, we can say the membership converts to about an $11 fee, but you do need to spend more than $11 to buy it outright. I should note you are given 4 gold coins per day for your first game, but this seems silly and just pointless fluff. Give me a real reason to play daily, not the 4 gold coins. The part which becomes confusing to me is that each soldier you have has its own leveling system, which you need to get through a lot of grinding to unlock certain weapons, vehicles, or supplies. Anything purchased on one soldier does not transfer to another, so if you buy an SMG for one character, it's stuck on him forever. 
You can't give it to another character to level up their SMG skills, for example. You'd have to rebuy that SMG on each character that you want to level up the skills for SMG with. Now there is a way, from my understanding, that you can transfer these weapons, but it requires you to kind of retire that soldier and to restart from scratch. This being the case, it doesn't seem very feasible for the average player. You can skip the process of leveling by buying experience, but the developers made it so you don't really know how much it'll end up costing you because you pay for it in chunks instead of just the unlockable level outright. Which by the way, is an absurd amount of money. They hope you'll fall victim to sunk cost fallacy, designed in such a way that you may just keep hitting that buy experience button over and over and over. I'm not going to be getting into how much this actually costs because the prices are just absurd to even test, however the majority of mobile games in which I have played are less predatory than this business tactic, and whoever designed it in this way should feel disgusted with themselves. Usually, before turning to these practices, games turn to cosmetic sales, but the best cosmetics they offer are recolors that look just as crappy as you'd expect if you were to toss someone in paint with a blindfold on. Wanna look like a toasted marshmallow? Eight dollars. How about this awesome outfit called Green Pea? Don't think it's awesome? Well, you're wrong. Twenty dollars. Did you think you'd get a hat after spending that? No. That's an extra three bucks. Do you feel like you're a valued customer yet? But Aerogatic, those are cosmetics. They don't impact gameplay at all. Okay, well, it waters down the experience and faith they show in their product. Let's look at buying a weapon instead. Oh, wait, that's, that can't be right. One sec. 30, 34? 34 dollars. Okay. Alright, yep, that's, let's move on. The cash shop for this game is an absolute joke, and selling a solution to a problem that they created in the first place is what this game is all about. As I stated earlier, guns, vehicles, medical supplies, anything you buy on a character is stuck to that character. There's no way to test them before purchasing either. You cannot change your loadout during a game, so most people will have specialized characters to choose from to swap between for the most fun experience. I can tell you that spending 30k on your third character for a medic pouch is not fun or exciting, nor is repurchasing mods for guns that you're going to end up replacing after just a little bit anyways. You can choose of course to go without mods to save some extra credits, but it'll cost you some performance. Some mods are easier to avoid than others, some change guns from 4 hit kills to 2 hit kills, or even 3 to 1. And that's hard to make an argument over not being necessary because the better you perform, the more you're paid out, so it's up to you to find what works best and what doesn't. Unlocking isn't something real in this game, you rent everything. As many negatives as I have to say, the system they have isn't necessarily bad, it just needs a lot of tweaking. It's as though you're punished for being a newer player, but the grind is so long for even just working on one soldier's loadout that it could take weeks to finish them. Just to feel that a shootout with someone else wasn't lost due to them having been around longer or sunk more money into it. There is no matchmaking system. I'm all for unlocking things and showing your strength, but it's incredibly intimidating to newcomers when they look at the grind ahead of them and then also see in their lobby that their team consists primarily of newer players and the enemy is filled with people who have been playing for years. I don't usually complain about grinding in games. I actually think a certain amount is even healthy for them. It's when you offer the ability to purchase levels outright that it devalues the idea of grinding in the first place. I'm going to give an example of why the grind is too much. This is a rare scenario, but think about this example from a new player perspective, as I have ran into this problem myself multiple times when I first started out. Tanks can get really tough to go against. If your team has no players that have invested in anti-tank yet, they can't do anything against a couple people who have tanks. The tanks are able to go to a point and stay inside their tank safely. Every point has a spawn of panzers as an anti-tank weapon just for this problem, however, the spawn is static and in the open. A good tank player is able to sit and aim at the box of these, making it impossible to damage the tank while they stay safely inside. If you add another tank on the hills in the distance, watching for anyone coming from another area with these weapons, suddenly the tanks are moving machine gun sniper rifles that make things blow up safely inside a castle that can't be harmed. An easy solution to this would be to have a few spawns at each point of these panzers. Maybe having them safely inside a house even, or crazy thought, making it so the tanker has to peep their head outside of the tank to begin capturing the point at all, risking being shot like the others who are challenging the point or even risking having their own tank stolen afterwards. This is a real simple solution that should have been implemented years ago. It amazes me when a single tank can constantly cause a point to be challenged while completely safe until someone shows up specializing entirely for them. This being only one of many major issues that comes to games without a fair matchmaking system, where time and money equals power and power trumps any skill, although a rarer scenario, it's only rare due to a lack of newer players in general, not because the system is working as intended. There's nothing fun about going against this. 
Bugs to a certain degree are fun, or at least understandable. My favorite game of all time was Gun Z, which was only fun due to the fact that it was built around bugs in the game that made it more fun for the player base. I can overlook a lot, but at some point bugs stop being acceptable. They become frustrating, Run running into them over and over and consistently happening in different ways with the same outcomes. At some point you wonder how obvious these bugs must have been for so long, yet never were corrected. And also, with them being so obvious, knowing they are not going to be fixed. If you throw multiple grenades after one another in rapid succession, it'll stop registering that you're pulling one back, and instead it'll have you drop one at your feet because it'll only read that you're letting go of the mouse but never pressing it for that grenade in the first place. Cars will flip on seemingly straight ground and cause you to be unable to drive further. Using panzers too quickly back to back on tanks won't register the damage done because the damage is done too quickly or something? Areas that are hot spots or on points that people use constantly every single match have holes where you can fall into it and won't be able to move. Or your person can get stuck trying to get out of water on the edge just constantly going in and out of the water as if you're having a seizure. I'm not going to keep going with a list of all the bugs, but these are ones that just off the top of my head that I remember running into almost every single game, and I don't think that's acceptable to run into them every match. I don't generally bring up a community when I think about games and trying to rate if they're good or not, but I've run into the same few people since starting where I have reported them for blatant racism, where they are still constantly being racist in chat to everyone and harassing people specifically, but nothing comes of it still to this day. There is an in-game report system, which I've taken advantage of every single time that I've run into them, which has been pretty consistently, yet there's nothing that's come of it. So to me, I believe the system is just there to make people feel better about themselves, to kind of shout into a void. Reports are not looked into unless you go to one of the three windows that you have to keep up to play a game with, and then copy down the ID of that match, and tell them who the player is, and send that in into a support ticket. Then you'll be able to get some sort of attention into the matter where they'll look into it. But Aerogotic, just block them. I wish I knew how. I know how to add people, but when I go to my friends list, there's an ignore list, and you can't add people to the ignore list from there. When you're in game, you also don't have the option to block them, or mute them. There's no option anywhere. It doesn't fall on me to jump through hoops to get somebody onto an ignore list, or find out how to do that. Okay, when you report somebody, it should immediately add them to the ignore list, or you should be able to right click their name and just add them to your ignore list from in game. The system in which is used for heroes and generals is archaic. It's not only archaic, but it's just pure lazy. There are just too many consistent problems that seem to just be accepted from the community as just H and G things. Even with all the negatives around this game, at its core, it's pretty enjoyable as a first person shooter. I only tried vehicles out a couple times, but it was pretty memorable too. I really enjoy when I don't stress about how much credits I'm losing, doing things that aren't optimal, and I'm just messing around while being able to defend a point alone against waves of enemies, or flanking around the sides to challenge a point while others are defending. The game is super fun when things line up for it. It's just weighed down by outdated mechanics and poor management. I completely understand why there's still a passionate, albeit small, community around this game, and I really want to see it get better, but it's just not something that seems to be ever happening for it. And that's pretty depressing. They've had a lot of time to fix some major issues standing out, and instead the community has had things delayed, cancelled, and ignored. I'm sorry, but Red Bajarni's smile doesn't keep me happy. At least not for more than a couple days. If something major changes, I may revisit this video, maybe update my review on it, but for now, I stand by the fact that Heroes and Generals, although it can be fun, is pretty bad. I see you. Oh, you thought, you thought, give me that. You're so good, thank you. Thank you. Now, now watch this, what, oh, that's a tank, I can't do nothing, I can't do 